Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today, I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm <laughs> sorry. Part of it was screaming uh, at the game, and part of it is just the weather, so I'm sorry. My voice is a, a, a touch deeper than normal, but I have a super exciting uh, knife to share with you guys. Uh, another short little unboxing video to share with you guys. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So, I've already been into this. This is not... An, I guess what you'd call an authentic unboxing, but I have not shared this knife with you guys yet in the form of an unboxing experience. So I want to talk about this just a bit. This is still just a first impressions video. This is not a review. This is available in a couple of forms. It is a wild knife and it's a very expensive knife for sure. Um, but I think a lot of you will be interested in it because of the price or the materials you're getting. So this is a new product from Katsu. Believe me, we're going to get to this. So this particular version of it, oh, it's really hard for me to talk. <laughs> I can't hear my voice to go up any. Hi, this is uh, uh, this particular knife is, is a very bizarre design. Well, there's two versions of it. This is the Katsu KST one, um, and I guess they call it that. I'm getting my fingerprints off of this because the last time I touched it was on a live stream. The front scale underneath is actually polished zirconium, and then we have a Timascus overlay on top of it, I guess. This looks like it might be a button. It, it's just, it's literally just a rectangle of Timascus, right? Titanium frame lock, zirconium pocket clip. Then we have San Mai ZDP-189, actual San Mai cord ZDP-189. It's also been polished. It's got a nice hand rub set and finish on it. Really nice. I mean, that's, that's a lot right there, just in terms of materials. You, I, I think the design is going to be very polarizing for a lot of people, but if we're just looking at materials, wow, that's a lot of expensive stuff, right? So what is this HV? I w I'm not familiar with the Vickers scale, but I guess that's the Vickers hardness scale, and it's rated at 901. I uh, talked to my um, chat in a live stream. I said, what is, how does that convert to HRC? Apparently, that's uh, 66 and a half Rockwell hardness. So pretty darn good. I mean, you know, ZDP will get up there to about 68. Uh, but considering this is coded, right, ZDP, I think people prefer it 66 to 68. So they're hitting that with the DLC coding, which normally will lower it, right? Pretty impressive. It's legit. And real ZDP 189. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was I, I just wasn't familiar with that scale, but that's what that means there, right? Um, so there are two versions of this knife. There's the, uh, the, the, the T and then the Z version. And the Z version is the exact same thing, but it's got a uh, Zerkatai uh, overlay. Same exact price. What is the price? 400 bucks. I mean, that can't surprise you, right? We got a full piece of polished zirconium on one side, Timascus, uh, and then the uh, the Sanmai ZDP-189 that's been DLC polished. Like, that's a lot, right? Even if this is made in China, that's... We're not seeing this type of stuff. In fact, I mean, even like, even with like Reich and Max Ace doing their wild thing, we don't see that all these combinations of materials very often. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's still not going to be a product that's made for a ton of people, right? Uh, already, you know, you got people who are like, yeah, okay, you know, it's great. A lot of expensive materials, but we're look, I, I don't like Timascus, right? It's the only two versions of this knife, curiously, that you can get have Timascus. Katsu. You should definitely make a version of this that doesn't have the Timascus overlays. Like just do the zirconium and the titanium with the ZDP and then reduce the price for, you know, whatever the Timascus costs, right? Because some people are just gonna, they would love just a plain zirconium front scale. We don't see that. You guys are capable of doing this. This is great for people who love Timascus. Like, man, I love that. I think that's great, right? But there's a lot of people who would love just the polished zirconium or even a flat zirconium that's not going to pick up fingerprints uh, and be charged way less for it, for sure. 
This is a front flipper only, and I'm happy to say, despite it looking like an object that's not ergonomically friendly or not friendly in terms of manipulation, it's actually very well tuned, and it's, ouch. <laughs> It's very well tuned, but it'll pinch the bejesus out of you if you don't get your finger out of the way. <laughs> I'll live. But what happened here is I went around because of how elongated that area is right there. That that you can see what's happening there, right? Um, so keep your keep the meat of your index finger back from that area. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's front flipper only, which some people aren't gonna like. In fact, a lot of people aren't gonna like that, right? Front flippers, in my opinion, are best when combined with a more common means of manipulation. Thumb stud or regular flipper tabric. You don't see a lot of front flippers combined with regular flippers, right? So I guess thumb stud and front flipper combination would be better. But yeah, well-tuned detail and the action is actually really, really smooth. It's running on bearings for sure. I don't, I, I do like that they used, um, zirconium for the pocket clip. And it's just, listen, this is a product of, Polish zirconium. It's gonna it's gonna be covered in fingerprints all the time, right? Um, but I I do like uh, that they use zirconium for the clip. I don't like the length or style of the clip, and I don't like that they put. I mean, it's cool, right? The Sakura uh, blade and the Moto design. It's it, that's cool, right? If you know, but I don't like that it's there, and I don't like the length of the clip, right? But I guess it is on theme. I mean, it, it definitely is. The other cool thing is, it's a lot more comfortable than it looks. I mean, it's it's not the most ergonomically mind-blowing experience ever, but it's way more comfortable than it looks. It's wild, right? And that's because of all these heavily chamfered edges. Every area that looks like it would be uncomfortable, especially these ledges right here, no, it's not. Because the edge of this, despite there being a shelf under there, is actually flush with the frame underneath it. And there's heavy chamfering on all of it. I am a huge fan of zirconium, despite it being a material that does make uh, the knife heavier than if they used titanium or something else, right? So if we look underneath here, you should be able to see this is all zirconium. It's just a slab of zirconium. Um, it still doesn't weigh... Oh, well, we're in... <laughs> I did glue this button back down, by the way. In the process, though, I broke a piece underneath, so now it rattles. That's great. So the weight on this guy still ends up being about five ounces. Not insane. If it was full Zerk, it definitely would weigh more, but it's not. It's um, it's just five ounces. You might be wondering, why can't they do zir zirconium on the other side? I, I think, I don't know. My guess, and so, like, listen, if you know, then just share it with us in the comments. It's probably because you can't, even if you were to attach a steel lock bar insert to a zirconium lock side, it's probably something about the way that titanium like a titanium frame lock like the tension can be used like i, I don't I, I would imagine like the way that they would spring the zirconium it doesn't bend as easily or maybe it's more brittle and it just doesn't have the same type of tertonium uh, titanium is more forgiving and it's bendy and flexible right so it's strong uh and you can get the right lock bar tension because of the type of material that it is, right? Zirconium, it probably wouldn't react the same way. And my guess is to get it to be a frame lock, this the tension on that lock bar would probably be kind of insane. That's my guess. But then, but I, I, I honestly don't hardly know anything about zirconium other than it makes for a really nice, super durable, you know, blade material, and it looks cool. But it's kind of heavy. So, anyways, this is really interesting. This is a limited run through uh, Katsu, apparently. Um, so if you're interested in this, pick this up. But Katsu, I would recommend doing a le less timascus -y version of it for people who like the look and just want the zirconium. That would be a good idea. This is cool, though. Katsu's been doing some, some crazy stuff. So I'll link this down below. You guys can check it out. You will get a full review on that after I've had a chance to carry and use it. Um, that's going to be it today, guys. Please. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.